So in NMR spectroscopy, uh, all nuclei of the same isotope, which experience the same applied magnetic field, B0, resonate at an identical frequency. So you would expect, if you run an NMR spectrum of any compound really, in this case this is ethyl acetate, as long as it contained protons, it should give you a single signal uh, at the resonance frequency. So if you run it in a 400 megahertz spectrometer, it would show up at 400 megahertz. Uh, but this doesn't happen. So the actual spectrum of ethyl acetate shows three signals. And the key word in this statement up here is experiencing the same applied magnetic field. So some of these protons experience the applied field slightly different from each other. And you can learn more about that in our screencast on chemical shift. So ethyl acetate has what we call three chemical environments. And these are these protons shown in green over here, these protons shown in red, and these protons shown in blue. So ethyl acetate has three chemical environments which give rise to three signals. So nuclei in the same chemical environment resonate at the same frequency and as a result they appear as one signal and they are said to be chemically equivalent. So all of these three protons over here are giving rise to this single signal, all of these three protons are giving rise to this single signal and so on. So we can test for chemical equivalence or if two nuclei are in the same chemical environment uh, a number of different ways. So the first of which is that nuclei which are indistinguishable after a bond rotation are chemically equivalent, so they're in the same chemical environment. So let's look at ethyl acetate again, and we'll focus on these green protons over the, uh, the left-hand side here. Now, if we rotate around this carbon-carbon bond here, now I'm just going to draw this as a sort of sawhorse-type projection, uh, what we mean by indistinguishable after a bond rotation is if you try and keep track of this proton here, um, as I rotate this bond around, you'll find that you can do it no problem at all, and you can tell that the proton is now down here. But if I were to continue rotating this and then black it out, when I bring it back, can you tell me which of those protons was the one that you were keeping track of? The answer is no, it could be any of these three. So as a result, all of these three are in the same chemical environment, they are all chemically equivalent, and that's why they give rise to one signal. We can do the same thing with the blue protons across here, just by rotating around this carbon-carbon bond. Again, just try and keep track of one of these. And if you rotate around that bond, you'll find that if you had blacked this out and then come back to it, you wouldn't be able to tell which of the protons was which. Therefore, they're indistinguishable after a bond rotation. And as a result, they are chemically equivalent. The issue arises when we look at the red protons in the middle here. Now, if we rotate around this carbon-oxygen bond and draw this as a sort of sawhorse projection, if you try and keep track of this proton here, you know that it's anti-clockwise around from the CH3 group. So you can rotate around that carbon-oxygen bond, and you can black it out, and when it comes back, you know that the proton is this one, because it's anti-clockwise around from the CH3 group. So you might say that these two protons can't therefore be in the same chemical environment. But there's another way in which we can test for this. So if they're indistinguishable by a bond rotation, they're chemically equivalent, or if they're on opposite sides of a plane of symmetry, they're also chemically equivalent. So let's have a look at this molecule in three dimensions. So here's ethyl acetate, and the CH2 group that we're going to be focusing on is this one up here. Now, if we rotate around um, this molecule around 90 degrees and look down the, the carbon backbone, we can see that these are the two hydrogens, these are the two red hydrogens, the CH2s over here, and there is a mirror plane right down the backbone of that molecule, and these two hydrogens are on opposite sides of that mirror plane. So because the molecule is symmetric uh, in the plane of the board, or in the plane of the screen, uh, we know therefore that these are chemically equivalent and will give rise to a single signal. This molecule here provides an example of, of both of these. So if we look at the molecule, there is a plane of symmetry down the middle here. So as a result, anything that's on this side of the molecule must be in the same chemical environment as anything on that side of the molecule. So this hydrogen here, you can differentiate by saying that it's ortho to the nitro group, whereas this hydrogen is ortho to the bromine. So therefore, these are not chemically equivalent. 
Um, but these, this hydrogen here is also ortho to the nitro group, but it's on the opposite side of a mirror plane. Therefore, these are on the same chemical environment, as are these down here. If we do it by rotation, we can see that we can uh, exchange the places of this hydrogen here and this hydrogen over here just by rotating the entire molecule across like that. And if we were to black it out and bring it back, you would have no idea which of these was the hydrogen that you started with. So we can identify these chemical environments either by symmetry or by rotating either a bond or the entire molecule in this case.